Alright, hello guys. This video is going to be a rant video as well as an El Nino update. I feel like I'm kind of getting sick, so I probably won't be able to make a video for the next couple of days. That's why I'm making a kind of random video with two different topics in it. But they kind of tie together, as you guys will see, so we'll get there when we get there. Anyway, so with this video, I was inspired because somebody commented once again that there will be no El Nino and basically was getting really mad at me and was disliking the videos and stuff it it's really a dumb reason to get mad at somebody i don't really understand it there's really no data to back the fact that there will be no el nino but there's just this group of people that consistently want to hate because they think that it's really dumb that i think there will be an el nino and it, it doesn't really make any sense and it's really funny actually i just it's a very common comment and it's just really funny that it pops up that much it, it, but I really do feel the need to address it because it's a very uneducated opinion and I wanted to kind of help everybody understand a little bit more about the El Nino and the data that I am getting that is showing that there will be one so we'll get to that there's also been a group of commenters that will comment something along the lines of and you guys have probably seen this already too somebody that will comment something like Meteorologists can't even forecast three days out, so how do you expect this meteorologist to forecast long range or five months out or whatever? And I do appreciate the fact that they compliment me while insulting me by calling me a meteorologist, even though in reality I'm just a weather enthusiast and never claim to be a meteorologist. Anyway, to get started with the El Nino portion of this video, I wanted to show you guys this little graph that I found. Somebody linked me to the Australian Weather Service website. It's super cool and they have really interesting graphs that make it really easy to see and understand the ENSO forecast. And you can see here that this is a compiled forecast with a lot of different uh, weather models, long range climate models, and then there's a mean at the bottom. The mean is just the compiled average from all of them, so just keep that in the back of your head. Also that dashed red line that's barely visible on the very bottom one, it's pretty easy to see, but that red dashed line right around 0 0.8 degrees Celsius is the threshold for El Nino conditions. So anything over that is considered an El Nino, anything uh, to the left of that is considered La Nada or La Nina if it's past the blue dashed line, of course. So you can see that every single one of them has that by November. I didn't show September because it doesn't have it yet, obviously, because we're not in an El Nino yet, and September is right around the corner. But by November, they're forecasting that we will for sure be over that El Nino threshold. And by January, they all still have the El Nino holding on, except for the Medio. I, th I think that is actually the Australian model there. So, also take note that NOAA at the bottom is also calling for these El Ninos. I did get one other comment about the El Nino. Somebody telling me that NOAA isn't calling for an El Nino. They're calling for a La Nada. And I'm basically crazy for thinking that there will be an El Nino. And he just watched a NOAA video saying that there wouldn't be an El Nino. So, basically, I am, I am false in that opinion. NOAA is calling for a 70% chance of an El Nino this winter. It was 60%, but they just upped it to 70% as they're becoming more confident of an El Nino, as am I. So it's really not just my opinion or anything. This is everybody's opinion. I also got, uh, in contrast to that, I got a comment saying, oh, this El Nino is old news, and why are you making videos about it now? Everybody already knew there would be an El Nino. Well, I really just got into videos you know doing these videos again probably about what is it about almost a month ago now so that's why I didn't make it three months ago because I wasn't making videos then so I don't know why I would just make an El Nino video out of nowhere after I hadn't been making videos also the only thing that drove me to make videos about the El Nino is that people think that it actually won't happen so it's really just a response to that just to clear that up here is a graph showing the dash line again the red dash line up down is temperature left right is time and you can look at the bottom it'll show you the months october so uh also the little uh lines all around the main green one are the ensemble for members and that's basically all the little um basically these are all individual models with slightly different algorithms to basically forecast the weather so it's really just very slightly different models and showing what they what they're forecasting and you can see that they're all 
calling for at least an El Nino at, at some point. So that means a lot because sometimes they're very, very different, but they all seem to be in agreement of this. Anywhere from 0 0.8 degrees Celsius to as much as it looks like 2.4 degrees. I don't think it'll be that strong at all, though. Anyway, back to the other topic, which was short-range forecasting versus long-range forecasting, basically, because people think that it's the same concept and that it's just going to become more difficult with time, which just isn't the case, and I'm here to prove that. We're looking at a surface map here, and you will take note that there's a stationary front over Florida. Now, this is four days out. They said three days, but I think that's a little extreme because I think three days is pretty accurate so we're gonna do four days and you can see four days in Lake City Municipal Airport right under the stationary front for that day Saturday is calling for 60 percent chance of thunderstorms likely with 90 degrees now take note of the thunderstorms likely in 60 percent one of the main problems is that people will think that that means that it's probably going to rain all day, which just isn't the case. It means that there's a 60% chance that it will rain at some point in the day, which is way different than thinking that it's going to rain for most of the day because there's a higher percent, which I know that's what our brains are tempted to think, so it's not that you know abnormal to think that way, but that's just not the case, and that can lead to people thinking that meteorologists aren't as good as they really are. Also, forecasting 90 degrees Fahrenheit exactly, take note of that as we continue on now here's a one month outlook temperature probability from NOAA now this is outdated this is not for any time recent this is, was on March 15th I found this I found this on Google images so this isn't anything special or anything that could be useful at this point except for educational purposes now take note of the percentages 50 percent chance of above average temperatures there at the bottom now that's the big difference. They're not forecasting an exact temperature. It's really an anomalous temperature measurement. And I will get more into what that means because I know those are some big words. But an anomalous temperature measurement is basically just the differential from normal, the anomaly from normal. So that's a lot easier to forecast than an exact temperature, like way easier to forecast. So here's a, here's a little comparison, long range versus short range. Now in between I would put medium range, but this discussion was brought up and it's strictly long range versus short range. Now time frame is a big, big difference here. Over one month for long range is what I would consider long range forecasting is over a one month time frame. And then short range is anything under seven days. Now obviously at, on tomorrow's forecast, it's going to be very easy to pinpoint, whereas on day 7 it's going to be a lot harder, but the average would be right around 3.5 days or something like that, so about the 3rd or 4th day out is going to be the average of short range. Now the measurement of temperature, like I said, anomalous for long range, and I already explained what that means, it's just the differential from normal. And exact temperature is obviously the exact temperature that it will be outside. That's a lot harder to forecast. And if I was trying to forecast the exact temperature one month out, I would be so wrong. You don't even believe how wrong I'd be. But if I was to predict the anomalous temperature for seven days out, I would be 95% correct every time I forecasted that. That's just how easy it is to forecast anomalous temperature measurements versus exact temperature measurements. The result will be 60%, 50 to 60% success rate on both, I would say. Now, obviously, there will be times where you completely bust a forecast, and then there will be times where you completely nail a forecast, but it'll average out right around 50 to 60%. That's what it is. People are going to complain that meteorologists aren't good enough, but it's, it's a science that we don't really fully understand, and that's what makes it so interesting to a lot of people. So you can't really complain about it. Anyway, I hope this video was kind of educational and not too much of a rant. I hope that, you know, this didn't come off as immature or anything. I just felt the need to kind of address it because it's become such a common um, topic in my comments. I've seen a lot of this, and I really have been replying to all of them, and I would really like to just, you know, leave a link for a video under those. So this is going to make things a lot easier for me. Going through the comments, I do feel the need to kind of educate people, so that's why I do reply, by the way. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope that, like I said, it, it wasn't too much of a rant or annoying or anything. I just kind of wanted to get that off my chest. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Hopefully you'll subscribe if you're new. Have a great week.